Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to do a true story episode about the bottle incident that happened at a Guns N' Roses show in Sacramento in April of 1993. So Guns N' Roses were on their Skin and Bones tour across America and they had a stop in Sacramento at the Arco Arena and it's kind of funny when you watch the actual bootleg footage it seems like a great show. They got about 90 minutes into their set until Duff was actually knocked out unconscious by what some people say was a bottle of piss, some people claim it was a bottle of water. But even before that incident happened, Axel took the time to dedicate Double Talk and Jive to Metallica. Here's the actual rant from the show. So we're kind of like around the bay area, right? Good, so it's kind of like we're, we're here on somebody else's turf in a way. We used to like to think that we were homeboys or something. We talk about maybe your good friends, I don't know, Metallica for a minute. We were going to tell you a couple of things about Metallica. First off, they do a lot of bitching for a band that got paid about 20-30% more than fucking what we deserve that show because they didn't bring that much. Ooh, he's just talking now. What is he? Who do you think he is? I'll tell you who I think I am. I thought I was friends with these people. You know, I don't know how long they were on the road, but... There was nobody in their crew that ever got a bonus or paid anything extra for working their fucking ass off and saving for that man. I pretty much watched a lot of people get treated like shit if it wasn't for me in trouble. I watched a man named James prove that, you know, see, since I'm supposed to be the rock racist, because I use a word once, I watched the man show me that he was a motherfucking racist. Had a really big problem with ice tea and any black man is actually on my weapon. I really thought those black men are kind of black men. I watched him be really silly to black people who work with us. That wasn't very enjoyable. I watched him diss on other people like Sebastian and shit. People that like love this fucking man. They love the talk and they were like, well, they do anything for that man. And the kind of people don't give a shit. Mars didn't give a shit. Motherfucker calls me at four in the morning trying to kiss my ass and stuff. I was like, but I can't trust the motherfucker. So you're going to take it and figure out where we're going to make some more money. Like the time that we sat around having a video for the time and we talked about being in the water and showing all these things and then what about what's in the rest of the video? And the cool thing about it is he caught to it. Yeah, I was ripping you guys up. I'm going to dedicate this to these people who like to run fucking little video of people saying, fuck you, we're just ain't the number of the score. This is not hot, huh? Who say things like, Oh, they always think they jump because we're friends. I mean, you ain't no fucking friend of mine, you fucking stupid little brother. Get off the stuff. This is for you, Lars, and you, James. We just go double, talking, jive, motherfucker. Now, being here in Sacramento, do you think I would say that shit here of all places if I was afraid of getting called on it? I mean, I know that somebody here is going to call Metallica and tell them. I personally don't feel like talking to them over here, does that? I ain't telling them not to like the music, not to like them, or whatever. I ain't saying none of that. But it gets really fucking hard. We tried to play a show together. We wanted to do a tour with Metallica since the day we started. I remember seeing the band open for Rat at the Troubadour. We worked real hard to put this fucking thing together. We paid them a few million dollars more than they every band should have got paid because they wouldn't do it because they got a certain amount. Okay, fine. Let's just do the show. We took a loss. 
It was cool because we wanted you motherfuckers to be able to see that show. That's all it was about. And the only way we could fucking get him to do it was that we called it Cole Headlining. Okay? So finally we called it Cole Headlining. But when the shit all went down, the motherfuckers couldn't live with it. Oh my god, we woke up around the world just how are we how are we ever live this down? If that's the way you felt about us, you should have never played a motherfucking show with us to begin with, man. Just be fucking honest. So during the show, some notable things is that um, as Axel went off on Lars and James, Slash actually jammed on Fleetwood Max oh well during Double Talk and Jive. And before he used to love her, Axel actually displayed a corn shucker, a real butt effer banner that a fan made. And before Patience, the band actually had strippers bring beer on stage. And then the incident with Duff happened. So the band was playing November Rain. And right after the outro to November Rain, somebody threw a bottle on stage that knocked Duff unconscious. So Duff wrote about this in his book, and here's what he had to say. According to Duff's book, he said, On stage in Sacramento on April 3rd, a bottle came flying out of the top tier. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. It hit Matt Sorm's floor time and screened off, and then everything went black. The bottle had hit me right in the temple and knocked me out. The show ground to a halt. I was rushed to the emergency room. From the hospital, I returned to our hotel in Lake Tahoe. The next night, we had a show in Reno, and our managers deemed the Four Seasons in Tahoe the only hotel in the region worthy of our business. So here's the actual live footage of Duff getting hit with the bottle, and then Axel and Slash addressing the crowd. See what it was. Well, we like. Yeah. Yeah. I hate to ruin your fun, and I'm fun. But somebody just hit Duff in the head with a bottle and now he's not able to play, so we're sorry. Have a good night, and if you find the asshole, kill him. Hold on. Can I get everybody's fucking attention for a second? All right. This is half, this, this shit happens in a lot of gigs. And I know it's not everybody in this fucking building's fault, but some asshole just hit Duff up the fucking head with a bottle of piss. Alright? And now he has to go to the fucking hospital. So what the fuck is it? It's over. And it's just one person that does it. It's the stupidest fucking conduct in a concert. We're supposed to be having a good fucking time.
Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Anyway, listen, there's no way we're going to fucking come back on, so listen, the show's over. And if you could do us all a favor and the building a favor and everybody that's working to make this a good fucking time a favor, just leave peacefully. Don't fucking fuck with other people. Don't fuck with anything. Just cruise on. And hopefully if we come back to Sacramento, we'll have this whole show and some dick face won't throw in shit. For the most part, you guys have been awesome, all right? shut down its show at the Arco Arena in Sacramento, California last Saturday night, 90 minutes into its set, after bassist Duff McKagan was knocked unconscious by a water-filled plastic bottle thrown from the audience. The set had begun with a warning from Axl Rose that the group would stop playing if anyone threw a bottle at the stage. McKagan eventually turned out to be okay. Before the show ended, though, Rose got in a few verbal licks at GNR's one-time tour mates, Metallica, especially lead singer James Hetfield, who Rose called a racist. GNR sources say they surmise Axel is still angry that Hetfield wasn't big on the idea of having iced tea and body count open last year's GNR Metallica tour. Rose, who dedicated the song Double Talk and Jive to Metallica, is also said to be upset by Hetfield's comments in the current issue of Rolling Stone. In the article, Hetfield says that Guns N' Roses wasn't so much a band, but a guy and some other guys. Hetfield also criticized what he called Axel and his attitude, and the way Axel stalked off an ill-fated show in Montreal, allegedly setting off a riot among disgruntled fans. GNR sources indicate that the bad blood may have started when Axel saw Metallica's A Year and a Half in the Life of home video, where Hepfield makes fun of Axel's personal tour rider. Axel pose, dressing room, requirements. Uh, absolutely no substitutions. One cup of cubed ham, not yeah. You know, it's got to be cubed up right so get down his little neck. Uh, one ribeye steak dinner, and even though the guy ate meat, you know, looked like a vegetarian. One gourmet cheese tray, pepperoni pizza, fresh. I think that, you know, it's just for throwing around. I don't know anything, man. Cans of assorted like Pringles old. chips, you know, greasy shit. What the hell are you talking about? Put his hair back and all. Sue B. Honey can make some sick like this. Metallica's management told MTV News that the group was on its way from Australia to Indonesia and was unreachable to respond to Rose's taunts, but added, quote, if James has something to say to Axel, he wouldn't want to say it through the press. He'll say it to his face, end quote. In less controversial news, members of the Grateful Dead will mark a first in that group's long, strange... So the following night, Guns N' Roses play a concert in Reno, Nevada, and at the start of Mr. Brownstone, Axel actually asks Duff how he's doing after being hit in the head with a bottle the night before in Sacramento. So Axel told the audience that they stopped the show the night before and they would do the same tonight if anything else was thrown on stage. As GNR was coming out for their encore, someone in the audience lit up fireworks, which pissed off the band and made them end the show. Thus, there was no encore and Paradise City wasn't played. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you guys want to see the uh, footage of the Sacramento show, uh, the first 90 minutes or so, I've linked to it down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and have yourself a good one.